in Khartoum has tweeted out a statement putting more international pressure on Sudan's government. It speaks on behalf of what it calls a troika of countries made up of the US, Norway and UK and from Canada as well. It says... They're concerned about the violence that occurred during recent protests, including credible reports of the use of live ammunition by Sudan's government and multiple deaths during several protests. Well, let's now speak to Hassan Haj Ali, who is a professor of political science at the University of Khartoum. He's on the line from Khartoum. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, these demonstrations that we're seeing are showing that uh, the country, Sudan, is heading to a crucial moment, it seems. Omar al-Bashir is promising change, real reforms. Do you think there's a possibility for compromise? I think, uh, yeah, there is, uh, because... Uh, now the pressure is mounting on the government and uh, also um, the government is trying also to mobilize uh, its own uh, base uh, so I see uh, a process of mobilization and counter mobilization from from both uh, sides uh, so uh, there is um, the only way way out of this is uh, to have a compromise, a political compromise, uh, mm -hmm. to save the country from bloodshed and further uh, deterioration. Uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. What would be a, a good political compromise as far as the protesters are uh, concerned? Because it seems that they want nothing less than Omar al Bashir's resignation. Is that likely to happen? Uh, I don't think that would happen, uh, but. Uh, Maybe the, the, the possible compromise would be concerning the coming 2020 elections, uh, whether we are going to have a credible elections in 2020 or not. This will be the crucial uh, thing that uh, the demonstrators want uh, 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 a, a concrete steps taken to a uh, democratic uh, process. Uh, so this is a crucial issue now for yeah. me. Uh, the, the protests, as we've seen, uh, have spread and have widened to include various sectors of society. Uh, is there a structure, though, to this movement? And, you know, what role has the opposition played? Uh, the National Uma Party's leader, Sariq al Mahdi, returned to Khartoum on Wednesday. Do you think the opposition can capitalize on the discontent and, and strengthen their position, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, as we know, the, all these demonstrations... Uh, especially those occurred outside Khartoum, uh, they happened uh, spontaneously, without any uh, political uh, orchestration from political parties or political organizations. Uh, but uh, the demonstration today in Khartoum is uh, organized by uh, political parties. So the political parties are trying to catch up uh, with the, uh, the demonstration, with the movement of the ordinary people. And at the same time, as I mentioned, uh, President Bashir himself is in, uh, in another state, in a Jazeera state today. Also, he was able to mobilize some base there from the NCB, the ruling party in, in, in Madani. Uh, so he's trying to counter the mobilization from the, from the uh, demonstrations also. Right to uh, show his defiance also, Brother Bashir, now. He, he's, he's defiant, and we've heard the government uh, accuse infiltrators, what it calls infiltrators, uh, for this unrest. 37 people are killed so far, according to Amnesty International. What do you expect to happen next? You know, will the government toughen its response, or are they likely to take a step back because of the international focus that is on Sudan right now? Uh, I think uh, taken into consideration uh, previous incidents like this uh, I don't expect the government to back up from to back down from from this uh, process uh, but my expectation that the, the demonstrations might continue in Khartoum state uh, because in other cities now conditions are uh, settling down uh, especially in Adbara in Gadari fire uh, demonstrations took place uh, two days ago. So what I expect uh, that in we, we might see scattered uh, uh, demonstrations in Khartoum, even tonight, maybe tomorrow. And uh, this will set the tone for the coming days, I think.
Okay, thank you so much for speaking to us and telling us about the situation there uh, in Sudan. Hassan Aj Ali is a professor of political uh, science at the University of Khartoum. Now, we've talked about what's happening inside Sudan, but Sarah, a social media producer, is here to tell us now about what people are saying outside of Sudan. Yeah, so a few days ago, we spoke about this on Newsgrid, about how the internet has been blocked by the Sudanese government, which means a lot of people are using other ways to get online, such as VPNs. But the online conversation has meant that it's been dominated, in fact, by Sudanese nationals living abroad. You have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. All of these have been blocked there. Now, there are about 2 million uh, Sudanese people that are living actually outside of Sudan. That's according to research by the Pew Research Center. And many of them have been keen to use their accounts in spreading news of what's actually going on back at home in Sudan. <laughs> Now, those videos that they are sharing are like this one here, the Solidarity Protest. This one's been happening in Washington, D.C., uh, in the U.S. And members of the Sudanese uh, community chanted actually in front of the embassy there. And there were also protests happening in the U.S. state of Arizona uh, with some of the people live streaming their thoughts as well. We have to say something very important to the Sudanese people living abroad. We call them to support the revolution, its people and the injured. We've been ruled by Bashir for more than 30 years and we have suffered a lot. He was able to reinforce his rule through political oppression, but now it's the time for the people who will suffer a great burden trying to get rid of the regime. The youth have been the energy and drive behind this revolution and we are behind them until the end. But this doesn't mean that us, the older generation, won't be of help with our knowledge and experience to regain our system of moral values. And speaking of youth there, you can see some of the children in Sudan. They've been participating in their own type of protest, which is chants, uh, dancing rather and chanting against the Bashir government. Now, aside from those protests on the streets, there have also been acts of political resistance online, like this cartoon here. This one is by a prominent, uh, prominent Sudanese artist called Khaled El Bay, originally made it in 2011, but has actually reposted it since, saying we all want uh, to just hug Sudan right now. And you can see that's a person there hugging Sudan. But there have been other cartoons also as well, like this one, um, to show you, oh, we don't have it there. Uh, nope. Um, there's been other cartoons that people have been sharing of present. Omar Bashir hiding behind his army. Uh, and this Twitter user has said that the um, explosion of the art scene and creativity that you're seeing is an early sign of an ongoing uprising. He says a new generation with new ideas and conceptions uh, of Sudan's identity has been brewing for a while. What we have struggled to find, though, is a conversation of those supporting uh, the President Bashir, even after he promised to address protesters' complaints. Now, he's expected to speak again today, but as our reporter Heber Morgan points out, the only reform the protesters want to see is a new regime after 30 years of NCP rule, and how long can they go on? And if you want to follow all the updates that are happening in Sudan, then the person to do that is Heber Morgan, our reporter. She's on Twitter, at Heber underscore Morgan is her Twitter handle. And people are sharing their